I'm here in Red Deer. Um, I'm parked in the parking lot and I am selling uh, t-shirts, hoodies, and toques um, and promoting the new project, Oil & Gas World Magazine. And it has been awesome. It is, I've, I'm, I've interviewed uh, the Premier, uh, Jason Kenney. I've uh, interviewed tons of other politicians. And we have the first issue. It's still a sample issue of Oil & Gas World Magazine, but it's pretty much done. We have some editing to do and we're working on the second issue. And uh, it's been amazing. I'm taking this uh, 1977 I actually was told to call it a Bluebird school bus that's yeah. been converted because that sounds better. So it's a Bluebird bus. I'm taking it across the country on a very slow pace, interviewing Canadians about oil and gas, um, connecting Ottawa, and also hyper-focusing on Justin Trudeau's failure to address the energy crisis in Europe, particularly Germany. Now, in Red Deer today, this is the Canada's Strong and Free Networking Conference. What's been the reception from the crowd? It has been amazing. Um, there's this new movement with conservatives that they feel that they have not been properly uh, heard and represented in mainstream media. And I'm surprised it's coming from all walks of life. So it's nice to see that there's a new initiative to tell all sides of the story. And I'm happy that I'm contributing in my small way by reaching out. I've had people come up to me today quite emotional, saying like they've... I. I I'm hyper focusing too, not just on oil sands, but uh, and oil and gas, but also on the communities that have been brutalized when they shut down the coal. And I, I find it really odd that government, regardless of what stripe, would come in and say, "Look, we're going to shut down your industry, promise you jobs, and literally ruin your lives." And then there might be a slow economic turnaround as you adjust, but it, it's caused a lot of damage, particularly uh, you know in the Parkland County region. Yeah. Um, so I'm finding that quite intriguing. Um, this uh, project with this magazine, the digital and the video, it's not just about CEOs. We'll, we'll have definitely interview everyone, and we're getting all kinds of requests. But the, but it's about telling all the stories, and I'm really happy to tell stories of regular people. Like uh, me. Uh, yeah, you and me. <laughs> regular people, families, uh, and it, it brings a lot of joy. And the project's been a lot of fun. And it's fun. I'm starting to join the bus now. I went shopping. I got new bedding for it. I, it's a mess inside right now because I've got to kind of organize it. But... Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't slept in it yet, but I will probably start sleeping in it probably tomorrow. Um, and as I inch up my way through these towns. So you've told me before, but maybe for people who don't know, what inspired the bus tour here? So the main, there's two. Okay, so the one was when Pierre Polyev wore uh, this logo in Ottawa and the Carlton Liberal Association it implied that he was a white supremacist, implied that we were white supremacists. And that really bothered me. Not to the point where I need to go and like scream and yell, but I just thought like what kind of narcissistic douchebag loser would label an organization without even meeting them? And I have like, I mean, Oil Sands Strong has, you know, millions of reach. Like one, like last month we had over 37 million. I can fight back and, and people that know me, though that's not true. But I thought about it. What if there was someone else who didn't know people in media, couldn't fight back? And, and that could have permanently damaged their brand. And that's happened. Like if you remember like Tommy Hilfiger, they said his brand was racist and he said something on Oprah's show that never happened. But the damage that that did, and Oprah had to come up and say, no, that didn't actually happen. So I don't appreciate the privileged people of Ottawa that have in that, live in that recession-proof community whose decisions affect everyone here in Alberta doing that. And the other reason is kind of simple. I, I'm really enjoying taking a break and driving a bus, and I want to... I want to tell the stories of Canadians uh, that are not necessarily heard or listened to and provide them a platform. And I like I like the the deep dive that I'm able to do with this magazine. I can tell stories that aren't like about cooking and canning and, and family. And and I want to I want to go a little deeper because I do believe that uh, there's such a disconnect between Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and the rest of Canada. And sometimes we're completely diff two different nations. Um, so I'd like to kind of give people a voice. And the, the new thing is like, uh, our prime minister had a chance to once to, to, to could you imagine the, I heard a low estimate of what would mean if we did the LNG to Europe and it's like a quarter of a trillion dollars every year. I think that's low. We could have probably added a trillion dollars to our economy. And outside of our economy, think about what we would contribute to world peace. A hundred percent. I mean, there's all this talk about dictators, uh, Russia, Putin, and we could provide environmentally stable and 
they, they talk about like the United Nations uh, saying that we need to have better relations with our indigenous, uh, you know, uh, residents of the country. And there's nothing better for economic reconciliation for indigenous people than resource development, particularly the Salem Two First Nations in British Columbia, of course, Fort McMurray and across. And I think that energy will provide that. So if the United Nations actually cares about the indigenous people of this country as a Métis person, I think they would double down on energy development for our country. And um, it, like, look, Germany is a smarter country than we are when it comes to technology. They know what green energy did. They they developed it. They did it fast. And now they're going back to fossil fuels. They're going back to natural gas. And it really, really suck if they have to go beg Putin to get energy so they don't freeze this winter. And um, I think there's been a, one good thing. I think there is an energy wake up call. I think these so-called environmentalists are realizing there's no such thing as green energy. And it's moronic to shut down natural gas, propane, fossil fuels. Um, and I think I think there's a bit of a switch. It's unfortunate, though, that our prime minister comes from second generational wealth, um, doesn't understand that in business you need to market and fight for business. And uh, this would be an opportunity. It's unfortunate that he was the face. But I do believe that there's a fight in pr province wide to make this work. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix, and in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.